let me try meditating. Like Hunter, you talked me into meditating. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you say it for a couple of years now. You finally talked me into it. I feel amazing. I don't feel like I'm like this, you know, enlightened being on top of a mountain. But I, I have that pause when I talk to my son. I have that pause when I talk to my partner. You're listening to the Mindful Mama podcast, episode 132. Today is an on-air coaching session talking about how to get out the door in the morning. Welcome to the Mindful Mama podcast. Here it's about becoming a less irritable, more joyful parent. At Mindful Mama, we know that you cannot give what you do not have. And when you have calm within, then you can give it to your children. I am your host, Hunter Clark Fields, Mindful Mama Mentor. I coach overstressed moms on how to cultivate calm in their daily lives and create more peace and cooperation in their families. I've been practicing mindfulness for over 20 years. I'm the creator of the Mindful Parenting Course, and I'm the mom of two girls who challenge me every day to hone my craft. Thank you so much for being here, my friend. Jordan, welcome back. If you are a frequent listener, I am so glad that you're here. It really warms my heart. I love reading the reviews. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been been getting lots of great feedback and I really, really appreciate your presence here today. In just a moment, I'm going to be sitting down with Christine, a mindful parenting alumni who is struggling with getting her four and three quarter year old son out the door. So you get to listen as we problem solve this issue so that she can get out the door and keep her relationship with her son close. I'm going to ask her about her life and her conflict of needs. We're going to talk about how meditation changed her life. And you're going to hear how our kids reflect back her our worst habits. You're also going to get to hear her takeaway about how it goes much deeper than just these daily parenting habits. So I can't wait for you to hear this very special on-air coaching call. But before we dive in, I want to tell you briefly that Mindful Parenting, the course, is starting up really soon. In this conversation with Christine, you are going to hear about how the the strategies and the tools and things we used in mindful parenting have really changed Christine's life. And you're going to get a chance to be part of this mindful parenting movement. And you can go to mindfulparentingcourse.com to learn more. And you might be able to catch us and do the mindful parenting free training week that I offer before I open up the course. So you'll find all the information about all of that at mindfulparentingcourse.com. Now, join me at the table as I talk to Christine. Christine, thank you so much for coming on the Mindful Mama podcast. Good morning. How are you? I'm so glad you're here. So, dear listener, this is our first on-air coaching call, our on-air Mindful Parenting coaching call. So I'm so honored that you are able to do this with me. It's really exciting. Oh my gosh, I feel so blessed and honored to be not only talking to you, but to be the first one. This is really great. (laughs) It's so cool. So the way we start all our coaching calls in Mindful Parenting and with my coaching groups is we start with a brief centering. So we're going to just do a shorter version of that for the podcast. So I invite you and the listener to sit nice and tall or take a moment to close your eyes and just take a deep breath into the belly. Maybe let out a sigh. And again, take a deep breath into the belly, the chest, breathe all the way up, and let that breath out. And then we'll just take a few quiet, mindful breaths here. And may this session be an offering of the heart from me to you and you to me, and from all of us to our families, our communities, and to the world. Because as we create more peace in ourselves, we truly create more peace for everyone. And so it is. Yay! Yay! So Christina, why don't you tell us 
tell us a little about yourself and your family. Give us a little bit of background as to what is going, what's going on for you. Well, thank you. So I have just always wanted to be a mom. And I found myself divorced when I was in my early 30s and facing that whole thing that I think women go through in their 30s, like, oh my gosh, I have to find a partner and I have to, you know, get married. I have to have children and I'm running out of time. And I've just always, always wanted children. And so I found this awesome, awesome partner, thankfully. And we went through so much to get pregnant and we lost several babies and we went through infertility and we went through IVF and we went through all that. And finally we had our son and my son just had an awful birth and he was in the NICU for a couple of weeks and, and we, we just went through so much. And after I got out of the hospital, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize like how much anxiety is handed to you in your hospital bag to take home when you have a child. Like, it's like here's your diaper bag and this backpack filled with like worry. And I used to be like this really fun woman, like riding my motorcycle and hitchhiking and traveling. And now I walk on a dock with my newborn son and I'm afraid he's like, he's going to fall out of my arms and drown and there's nothing I can do. And I'm just terrified and walking around terrified. And I work at a hospital and on Facebook one night in our local group, there was this discussion going on about what's that accident on the highway. And turns out that there was a mother that was visiting from out of state looking for a new place to live. And she had her four-year-old son in the back seat. And a drunk driver went up the highway the opposite way, like 80 miles an hour and hit her head on and killed her. Oh my gosh. And so her, her four-year-old son is in my hospital this happened on the exit where I drive all the time to go to work. And the drunk driver was served at a Chinese restaurant that I always go to. And I think it was Memorial Day that weekend. And I was just like walking into work with like such anxiety, like shaking and teary eyed and just like so aware of how, how vulnerable we are. And I got on the highway and I, I live in the White Mountains and the, the, the holiday traffic was horrendous. And I was just like having a panic attack. Like, Oh my God, all the, I have to count on all these people to be sober, for their cars to be working, for them to be awake, for them to not be texting. Like I have to be, I have to trust all these hundreds of people around me, driving around my son and I. And then I flew into Oregon that next week. And when I got there, there's a big sign at the Oregon airport that's like, you cannot travel with your marijuana. And I'm laughing. I'm like, oh, Oregon, you guys are so crazy. But marijuana became legal that week. And I was there and I was like, oh my God, now I have to trust the people not to be stoned driving around my child. And I'm, I'm just like anxious all the time, like all the time. And um, I've just had a really hard time with it. And I've been listening to your podcast for, for a couple of years now. And I, I just have to thank you because you know how if you want to lose weight, you know you have to diet and exercise but you think like, oh, maybe if I take that pill or I take that shake, I, I don't I can get out of it. Mm-hmm. Well, I, like all my friends were telling me about Zoloft. And I'm like, that sounds so fantastic. Like, I want some Zoloft. But first, I'm going to try meditating. <laughs> like, let me just try. Let me try meditating. Like, Hunter, you talked me into meditating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard you say it for a couple of years now. You finally talked me into it. I feel, I feel amazing. I, I don't feel like I'm like this, you know, enlightened being on top of a mountain. But I, I have that pause when I talk to my son. I, I have that pause when I talk to my partner. Like, I, I'm really able to, like, focus inside on my feelings and be like, wow, I feel mad now and it really passes quick. And the thing that's been the most amazing to me is I heard you talking about your your experience with anxiety, and you talked about how you used to get so sad every month. And when I heard you say that, I go, oh my, once a month, I used to feel like hiding in my closet and crying for no reason. And it finally hit me, I don't feel that way anymore. And I feel great. And I mean, I have been seeing a therapist who's been doing like some tapping, but I really think it's the meditating that's, that's really helped me um, evolve. Wow. And 
Wow. I, I mean, awesome. I can't thank you enough for that. I just, it's like it, now when I'm like cranky, instead of like, oh, mommy has to go have a drink. I'm like, oh, I got to go meditate. <laughs> or, Honey, mommy has to go in the other room. And it's, it's been really such a gift to, to our family. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's so Thank awesome. You. Wow. I've got like goosebumps. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So yeah, so you've, you've been through the mindful parenting course. You were able to start your, your meditation practice and wow, I'm so glad it's really sticking. It's really helping. It is. That's cool that it was able, and there's nothing against Olaf for anyone who needs Zoloft. Like that's great. But I, that was, I think that was a smart move to just like, well, let me try this thing first. This meditation yeah. thing doesn't have any side effects, I guess, you know, <laughs> it's free, right? It's totally free. So easy. You can do it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. Wow. So you were dealing with all this anxiety. You, you it sounds like you had this sort of fun loving life. You're a motorcycle rider and, and, you know, working in a hospital and, and you, and then went through so much to have your son. I know, that is such a big trial to go through infertility and all those different things. And then the, the anxiety of the newborn. Well, tell us, tell us a little, um, I want to know like how old is he now and tell us a little bit about kind of the major players in your life. Well, so my son is four and three quarters. You can't leave the three quarters out and (laughs) (laughs) very important distinction. And I have my partner and we have his parents. They live right up the road. My, my dad is in Florida, and I have some wonderful and amazing mother friends who I don't know what I would do without them. Like, they're like the, the rock that holds my life together, the glue. And there's, I don't think there's anything more valuable than a mother friend because you think like, oh, my God, my son just punched that other kid. He's going to grow up to be a serial killer. And then your, <laughs> your mom friend says, my son did that yesterday. You're like, oh, phew, it's normal. <laughs> yes. Thank God for moms. Yes, yes, it makes such a big difference to have that community. Cool. So your son, four and a half, your partner, his parents, and things like that. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk to. I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about the challenges that are come up, coming up, and kind of, um, and and break them down and, and help Christine with with some of the challenges. But the way we do our coaching calls and mindful parenting is that one of the first things we do is we focus on the wins, and we focus on the wins very deliberately because. We know that the brain has the negativity bias, right? We know that we prone, we're prone towards worry and, and anxiety and all those things just because that's the way we're wired to survive. So to counteract that, we want to lean into our wins. We want to, to, to focus on them and, and savor them a little bit. So Christine, what are your wins? <laughs> what are the wins that are going on for you right now? <laughs> Oh, I always think about this. There's another, there's another mother podcast podcast that always has nailing it and feeling it. And I, I think that every time you get together with your girlfriend, she you should do around. <laughs> yeah. But, but for, uh, for me, like I, I, my son went back to school and I'm actually making him lunch, which is just so stressful to my brain. And I, I think that we've done a really great job with my son with emotional intelligence. Like if he's sad, we don't try to say, oh, to get over it. Like we really are, you're sad. How does that feel? You know, why do you feel sad? We're doing a really great job with that. I think that awesome. we're really good at allowing him to say no and like respecting him. I think mm-hmm. that that's, that's really important. I mm-hmm. think that we're really great at not stressing over the little things. Except for his, that's the thing that's hard about about having wanted my son and then you get mad because he's not getting his teeth brushed and you have to ask a hundred times. You're like, I know how blessed I am you're here. I know how much I wanted you. I know how much we went through to have you, but I am so angry right now because I asked you to brush your teeth a hundred times. And so, <laughs> so that's why I need you every week. <laughs> awesome. And, and it sounds like you're keeping your meditation practice up for you. Yeah. yeah. Twice a day. Yep. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. That's definitely a win. That's a great, feels win. great. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. So some wins, keeping that meditation practice, doing a great job with emotional intelligence. You're really uh, respecting his emotions and, and respecting him and, and not stressing over the little things. High five, Christine. Thank love you. it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yeah. Lean into those wins. That's so cool. Cool. So, so what challenges are coming? What are the challenges that are coming? Well, I, I, 
the challenge that I'm focused on currently is that my son started back to school. Um, so I only work two days a week, and those are the days he's gone to school, typically. He's mm -hmm. in the second year of preschool. But this year, he has one day that I, I drop him off at school and I come home. And <laughs> I know that a lot of moms would like kill for that, but I'm like, oh, my God, I want to be with him. So I just, <laughs> like, I miss him, and it, it's just... Um, it's hard to be without them. So I'm trying to make like Thursdays my personal development days. Mm, mm -hmm. my, my goal in life has always been to have him. And I'm a mountain climber. So I feel like I've had this, this mountain in sight forever. And I've climbed the mountain and I'm on top. I'm not done with it. But now I'm like, what mountain am I going to climb next? So I'm in that phase in my life where I'm trying to see, like, what do I want to do next? Like, my jobs have always found me, but what do I want to do? And you had introduced me to um, John Bowman. Mm, and Roman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pro, yeah, thank you, with Front Row Factor. And um, he introduced me to Miracle Morning. So I've been getting up, I've been doing the Miracle Morning, and I've just been kind of journaling, what do I want to do? And I don't quite know what I want to do for a job yet. But one thing that, that I'm starting to do, also inspired by you, is um, I'm going to take that meditation class so I can bring meditation into my son's school. Oh, cool. Like, yeah. Like, you had that episode where you talked about school shootings. Mm. And it was so sad. It was so touching. And I, and I felt so helpless. Like, I know a lot of us feel around that. And I remember like thinking at the radio, like, oh, Hunter, you, <laughs> it's always somebody else, right? You could <laughs> teach an army of moms to volunteer in all the states and they could bring meditation into the classrooms. And you had that woman that was on your um, podcast that's doing that in all the schools with Angie Harris, I think. Yeah, that, Angie Harris is doing yeah. that. And um, and also Sarah Rudell Beach. Yeah, there's a bunch of people doing that. Mm -hmm. Right. So I went to their website and I found the training class. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we had a really sad incident in our town where there was a 12-year-old autistic boy that was bullied. And he ended up committing suicide. And the as if that wasn't sad enough, the mom posted something on Facebook and said, you know, this was my son and he died. Teach your children to be kind. And another mother in town wrote her own post saying, you know, I won't let the kids in our town be blamed. The parents need to take responsibility. So now there's like parent bullying going on mm. around this poor boy that died. And between the school shootings and the bullying in my town, and it, it's a small town, there's only like 15 kids in each class. I'm like, what can I do? And so that's like my next step is just as a parent volunteer, I'm gonna take that class so I can start bringing mindfulness into the classroom. So I'm doing that like for fun, like just to make my son's school environment better. But I'm also trying to look at the next mountain, like what do I wanna do in life? So that's where I'm at, and that's where I'm stuck. Okay, cool. So you're sounds like so you're currently a a nurse, but you've right, you have you're a nurse in what kind of nurse are you right now? I'm a computer nurse. <laughs> <You're> a nurse. <laughs> I, work, <laughs> I work on computers at the help desk at a hospital. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um okay, cool. Um so so it sounds like it sounds like kind of what I'm getting from you is that all these things have really changed your life in a really significant way. Like the mm -hmm. mindfulness has really changed things for you in a really significant way, helping you really be more present. You're able, you know, sounds like parenting is, is going well for you. You're able to really um, be present with your child. You're able to have a good relationship. You're able to pretty much create some cooperation and, and make sure your needs are met and his needs are met. And you're now saying, okay, I've got this. I, and this is kind of what happens, which is cool. Like, and that's kind of what happened for me too, is that when you, as you start to get more grounded with the mindfulness meditation and you start to just get really get your feet under you, it's like, oh, then you have all this bandwidth <laughs> that's available, <laughs> right? To, to, to share with the world, which is so cool. So you're, this has all been so helpful for you that you're really wanting to share it with more people and, and help more people. 
That's true, but I don't want to give the impression that I have my parenting all together because I work on it so hard every day and I never feel like I'm good enough. <laughs> that, that's a whole other subject. Well, we could, I mean, you know, I mean, and with, it, with the, the honor coaching for mindful parenting, I mean, we can definitely... It, it would definitely be helpful for the listener to hear, you know, what um, what does a challenge look like and how do we work on making the, making some of those things better in the parenting realm? Probably that's much more my strength than what do I want to do next in my life? <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Those are my two challenges. Those are my two moms. One I work on every day. <laughs> I love, I love that you're a mountain climber. That's so cool. So, you know, as far as what do I want to do next in my life? Like, I think this is a, a great question and a really deep question and a really challenging question. And you're doing exactly what you need to do, which is to take action, explore your interests and explore your interests and, and also take actions. And then, and then through that action, clarity comes. And it's not like, you know, you, for most of us, like we don't suddenly have like an, oh my God, I'm going to do this, you know, and I have right. the vision. Um, and that's okay. So you, you, you're you taking action and you're going to get that clarity. Absolutely. And just bit by bit. And, and then also you have the mindfulness so you can sit with the discomfort of the <laughs> not fully right. knowing, right? You can yeah. work with that. You can work with that. Um, Let's, let's call. Let's take a deep breath in on that one. Okay. And deep breath out. Thank you. All right. So, so with, with your son and with your parenting, what, what are some challenges that are going on there that you might need some, some thoughts and some reflection on? Well, I think that there's several things and I've, I've heard them repeat repeated throughout the years but like just just the routine stuff I'm not a good routine person <laughs> like I'm not good at we're gonna get up at seven every morning and we're gonna do this and like we you know he just started school last year so we get to sleep till whenever we want all the other days we're having a great time and, and I'm not really good at getting him to bed on time <laughs> so I, I know that most of his problem is me <laughs> and so, like, when it comes time to do a normal thing, going to the car, getting dressed, brushing his teeth, sitting down to dinner, he just is so uninterested in all those things. And then I feel like that meme every day, you know, that meme where it's like, can you please get in your shoes? Can you please get in your shoes? Can you please get in your shoes? Like, are your shoes? And it's like, Mom, why are you always yelling at me? Like, I feel like I am that meme. Hunter here. I just want to interrupt this conversation for just a minute to tell you about some exciting things we have coming up. Are you frustrated with parenting? Do you want to practice conscious, compassionate parenting, but you don't know how? It's not easy, and there's no roadmap for this. Until now. I'm Hunter Clark Fields, creator of the Mindful Parenting Course, and I know how frustrating it is because I've been there. I struggled as a young mom, and when I found myself yelling and triggered by my child, I knew there had to be a better way, and there is. Mindful parenting is different from other parenting trainings. They don't tell you that all of that good advice is as good as useless when our internal stress response is triggered. Mindful parenting teaches you research-based tools and practices to reduce your stress response so that you can respond rather than react. And it teaches you exactly what to say so that you can create willing cooperation from your child. You can learn more and enroll at mindfulparentingcourse.com. And you can join us for a free live training coming up soon where you'll learn why your kids don't listen to you, how your brain undermines your parenting, and how to create cooperative kids without losing your temper. Sign up now at mindfulparentingcourse.com slash free training. That's mindfulparentingcourse.com slash free training. I'll see you there. Yeah, so it sounds like what you're repeating, you're trying to be respectful, trying to be conscious, and so you're, you're asking respectfully and 
you're repeating yourself and then, you know, you're kind of holding it and holding it. And then it's like, wow, you're like, I have to take your shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, cool. So that's good. Let's, let's, let's look at, can you think of like, let's pick one of those things, like either getting to bed on time, getting the shoes on time, getting, getting to dinner. And let's look at one of those instances and we can start to look at how we can do one of those instances a little bit better and um, well let me pick um let me pick well this is hard between toothbrushing and getting out of the house or equally stressful which is your <laughs> which is your specialty i don't have a specialty and i don't have all the answers but uh we can we can choose whichever one is driving you craziest <laughs> all right let's back to school so we'll pick getting to school Okay, getting to school on time. So tell me, tell me about getting getting out the door and getting to school on time. What's what's currently happening and what's so frustrating? Well, what's currently his lunch is already everything's packed, and I've only had to do this twice, so I, I can't even complain about it. <laughs> I think it's really much harder to do it, but or, well, actually, when we go to anywhere, but it's it's like everything's packed. I even put his lunch in the car. I have been getting his clothes ready. He wants to change his clothes. I got to get his teeth brushed and like he won't do that. And then all of a sudden he has to go potty, which takes 20 minutes. And it happens like every time you walk out the door and you can ask him, could you please try to go potty before we leave? And he, nope, I don't have to go. I don't have to go. He literally doesn't have to go until we're leaving every time. And mm -hmm. it's just like, it's so frustrating. I mean, we're, I, I'm trying to just like walk outside <laughs> and not be frustrated in front of him. Uh -huh. And, um, I'm trying, but like I try to have as much stuff as we're ready, but he's just stalling. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need this. And mm. in his defense, I will go to the car and I'll bring something. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to start the Roomba. Oh my gosh, I forgot your beating suit. So, like, so he's used to me coming back in the house five times. Uh, so he's doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he's, he's modeling the, you know, the pattern of uh, run back in the house for things. Um, and how much time do you give yourself? Well, I, um, we, we gave ourselves an hour today and we're okay. still late. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're trying to get out the door. You, you have everything packed. You're, you're kind of, you're trying to do things ahead of time, like have mm -hmm. the things packed, um, which is great. You're, it shows that you're thinking about how to problem solve this. Um, you're, you're showing that, you know, and you're, you're, you're trying to work through it. So the sounds like one of the things that's hanging you up is like all of a sudden he has to go to the bathroom right when you have to leave. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this, this is definitely, um, obviously this is, this is interfering with your needs, right? You need to get out the door on time. Um, <clears throat> so, so when you're talking to him about this um, and when he has to go to the potty, one of the things you can do is you can kind of like work on, you can work on your, your messages around this, right? Like uh, the, the, the language you're using when you're talking to him about this. So for instance, um, what might be, how might you develop kind of like an, an I message? Let's see if we can figure out an I message for you to talk, talk to him about maybe a preventatively, tomorrow morning before it's like right before you have to get the door and go to and go to the bathroom so um l let me give you a shot at it and then we'll see if we can work on it together so what what could you say say it's like you're gonna talk to him you know hey babe you know okay after so he's woken up a little and you say you want to talk to him about this issue Okay, so I took your class, so I feel like intense pressure to get this. <laughs> Don't worry. So when you, no, wait, I feel, <laughs> I feel really stressed mm -hmm. and anxious when we are late for school. I would really appreciate it if you would try to go potty first so we don't have to wait until right before we leave. Mm. Okay, that's great. The, you're, you're doing great. That's a wonderful way to talk to him. So I feel really stressed and anxious when you're ready to go to school, when you use the potty right before you have to go to school. And I would appreciate it if you could do it before him. So one of the things that's, that might be missing here is that you're talking about 
how you feel, but you're not actually talking about how this affects you. You know what I mean? So he, there's no like, um, there's no effect. And sometimes if you don't talk about how this, like you need to give him some more information about how this affects your life. Um, so that he can really understand. And, and like, you know what the feeling of stressed and anxious is, you know, that it has like physical real world effect, but you need to make that maybe a little clear about how this affects you. So give it another shot. All right. I feel really stressed, kind of stressed and anxious when we're late for school because I can't stay and play with you as long. I would appreciate it if you would try to go potty right when you get up so that we have more time to play, to get out the door on time. Mm. I'm a little confused. What's going on here about the playing as long? Oh, he's preschool. So we get to walk him in and we get to play with him before we drop him off. So we get to stay there for like a half an hour. All right, cool. Um, so that's the big, that's the effect of, of getting late to preschool. And um, so that, and, and for you, you, are you trying to go to work on some of these days? Or are you just going, are you going home on some of these days? Like, does it, take away time that you need for other things? Well, just coffee with my girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> so yes and no. Yes and no. So it, it takes away your time. So uh, the, when the way you're saying that, I, I, you know, if I'm him, I'm not really getting a clear message. Like, I'm like, well, who cares? <laughs> right. I'm right. thinking, you know, so maybe let's think about this. So when, um, and and I'll just to explain this to the listeners. So what we're doing is we're using an iMessage. So rather than some of the like Christine, you've got some skills. So rather than rather than saying giving an order, you know, get out the door right now, which causes resistance, um, we're trying to use the language uh, that that causes less resistance. And this has you know been shown to be. Uh, true and in so many instances it just getting out the door happens to be one of the most challenging instances <laughs> so let's um so let's see so uh when you so let's describe what's happening when you uh use use the bathroom use the potty right when you choose to before use the potty leave. right before we leave right okay so that's the description yeah. um i feel stressed um, I feel really, really stressed and, and grumpy. You might say grumpy. That might be a good word for a four and a half year old, you know, <laughs> I feel right. really stressed and grumpy. And, and then I can't, and then I can't play with you as long as school. And I, and I get, and I can't meet my friends on time, which I said I'm going to do. And so when you're also, when you're giving this message, um, you know, when you, Hey, dude, and you're gonna you're gonna crouch down. You're gonna look him in the eye. You're gonna get his attention. You know, listen, buddy. You know this. I've noticed this has been happening. And when you when you all of a sudden have to go to the potty right before we have to leave, I start to feel really stressed and anxious. And you're gonna use like use that emphasis, right? You're gonna tell him how you feel. You're not gonna be like. I feel really stressed and, you know, you don't want to be monotone. You don't, you want to, you want to just be real about how this really affects you and show it through, especially for a four and a half year old through your body language and the way you talk. So I feel really stressed and I feel really grumpy and, and then I can't play with you as much and I can't, I don't have time with my friends. So show through your face and the way that you're talking to him, how this is affecting you. Right. So you're going to, you're going to sit him down. You're going to show through your face and the way you're talking to him how this affects you and practice this eye message. So let's hear it, Christine. Let's try it again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> These take practice. <laughs> they do. They do. Thank you for practicing with me. When you choose to use the potty right before you leave, I just feel really stressed and really grumpy when we're late because I can't play with you and I can't have coffee with Miss Samantha and Miss Brooke. Yeah. And, and so then stop. Right. Because if you can stop, I mean, sometimes you can say, so could you go to the bathroom right now? Um, but but sometimes if you can stop and give him the chance to then respond to you, you know, to then like take that in. The, what's cool about that, if you don't um, make the suggestion and give the advice on what then what to do, um, then it, it puts the ball in his court and then he can say, 
and then he can he can respond and that and that can be really empowering for kids cuz then you know it's kind of like um if you give advice to someone and you, you like someone was maybe someone was about to do something say uh, you, maybe you were about to do something nice for someone, like you were about to like uh, bring in your partner's coffee, right? Uh, or go, you know, you're at the cafe, go get your friend's coffee for her. And she says, will you go get my coffee for me? <laughs> and you're like, oh, I was just about to do that. And you, like, how does that feel? Like, we don't want to do it as much because we've just been asked to do this thing that we we're just maybe going to do. That was a nice thing. Does that make sense, Christine? Yeah. You're totally missing out on the kindness point. You would have got <laughs> if they had an ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you want to give your son a chance, right? So right. Let, let's go like worst case scenario. Cause kids don't right. magically do what we want them to do. <laughs> and they do, they, have, <laughs> they do have their own agenda. Um, <laughs> so let's go worst case scenario and say, He's in, and, and, and let's back up a few steps here too, because, um, this, this, what this is depending on is that you've got his, you've got, you put deposits in your relationship bank account, right? And that you're, you're not using threats and yelling and punishment. So he's not used to resisting you all the time and that you guys are pretty close. So like knowing that you're you might have to talk about this in the morning, you might, you know, give him some extra kisses, extra snuggles, all that good stuff. Right. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, just really cr create that connection first. And then, you know, cause you're, you're kind of pointing out something that's bothering you. You want to create that connection first. And then this is kind of, this can be, then it's uh, you're on better ground for, for creating this message. Right. Okay. Got it. Um, so, and let's back up also a step. We're going to, we're going to talk about worst case scenario with this, but let's back up a step even further because, um, the time to talk about a lot of these issues is not in the stressful time or the time pressured time. Right. right. <laughs> so, um, so a, the, a good time to talk, what, what might be a good time to talk about this? That's not, do you, do you have a time with him that you might be able to talk about this? That's not in the morning when you're trying to get to school. Yeah, we could probably do it on a Saturday morning when we're just hanging around the house with no schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Or even like, the even the night before, right. Even the night before you could, you know, if they're, if he's not too, you know, too late and tired because that, that's really bad too. Right. So you want to find that, that, that elusive, no problem zone, <laughs> 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 but yeah. And then you can say, Hey, like, this is something I, I really want to talk to you about. This is important to me. Um, you know, you know, in the morning when, you know, when you use that potty right before you go, that really makes me feel, I feel start, not, it makes me feel actually, I feel, just say I feel because your, our feelings come from ourselves. We want to just own our own feelings, right? So not, it makes me feel, because so you might have some day where he's, he's doing that and it doesn't make you feel stressed and anxious. So you've, you've become enlightened through all your meditation. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you give him that message. Um, at, you know, at night and, and then you have a, a chance to talk about that. And you, and, and if he doesn't respond right away with, Oh, mother dearest, fine. <laughs> I will use the bathroom right away when I wake up. Uh, <laughs> you can say, so what do you think, buddy? How, how can we solve this problem? And, you know, do you have any ideas? Like put the ball very deliberately in his court and then listen, practice to just really be present and listen and see if you can have this conversation. Because when you, uh, when we involve our kids in the problem solving of these things, then they have a lot more buy-in, right? They're not, it's not some problem is not some solution is being forced upon them from above, which causes resentment. Like he might actually have some good ideas on how to solve this problem, but if he's like under time pressure and it's the morning, he is less likely to have those ideas. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Okay, cool. All right, good. So you're going to talk to him the night before. You're going to use your iMessage and, he, you know, hopefully he, you figured out something. We get to the next morning and he says, 
you're noticing that he still has to use the bathroom. You're starting to get anxious. Okay, so you're, you're in the morning, you're noticing that he isn't going to the bathroom, you're getting worried. Now, now your iMessage, you get to repeat a variation of that. So what do you do? I believe I would say, hey, last night we talked about what our solutions were for getting out the door on time. And mm-hmm. could, you please, could you please try to use the potty now? Yeah, yeah. Before we go? Yeah, well, that's great, but that's not the like a variation on the iMessage. So really, you know, in what might be more effective in that moment, again, you, you kind of you touch his shoulders, look him in the eyes and say, hey, buddy, you know, we talked about this last night and right now I'm starting to feel and really naming your feelings really helps to lessen them too. You know, I'm starting to feel worried that I'm going to miss out with my friends and I'm going to miss playing with you because you haven't used the potty on uh, yet. Remember we talked about this last night. So you want to go remind him of the effects, remind him of how this makes you feel. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, so you're going to do that. And how do you think he might react? It's a good question. Different every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As kids are, as kids are. So, so what we're doing here, listeners, we're setting him up the very best way we can for success, right? We're telling him what's going on. We're telling him how his actions affect other people. And this is the very, the very best way to set him up for success for making a choice internally, like making his own intrinsic choice to do the right thing. And sometimes kids don't do the right thing because they're naturally immature. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't. So let's say everything fails, the whole th- nothing works, and he he you know he he goes through with the regular pattern. Um, then then what do you do, Christine? How do you, how do you take care of your feelings in that moment? Breathe. <laughs> yeah. Take a, take a few deep breaths. And then probably and then I I gotta be honest. I probably threatened to put him in the car in his pajamas. <laughs> Yeah. And you know what? That's not a threat. If he's still in his pajamas and he's not taking care of his responsibilities, it's not a threat. It's an actually quite a natural consequence. You might say, and, but, and, and when you speak about it, don't speak about it in the way of a threat. Say, you know what, buddy, I'm sorry. You're still in your pajamas, but we have to go to school. So I'll bring a bag of clothes for you to, to change into a school and try as best you can to take the drama out of it on your end and just let these natural consequences play out. Does that make sense? Yeah, and you said that in such a nice manner. It was such a great example. <laughs> <laughs> like out of your mouth versus mine. <laughs> you know what? I feel exactly the same way in the morning. <laughs> so I don't always do it perfectly. And no one, no one does. So you might get triggered. And then you're going to start to use your tools. You're going to start to use your breathing, start to calm down. And you're going to tell yourself, I'm helping my child. This is not an emergency. Okay. You're going to remind yourself that everybody is safe. No, the, no one's going to die because you're late to school. Right. You know, and because the thing is our, your limbic system, your fight, flight, or freeze response responds to this as like a threat, right? Responds to your child as a threat. And we have to also remember that if we yell or we are threatening to our child, if we stand up high over a four-year-old and we raise our voice and we start to get, we, we're show, acting all tense and rah, um, then their fight, flight, or freeze response is going to kick in and they're not going to be able to learn and they're not going to be able to listen to you. So these are kind of the underlying factors that we want to really pay attention to here in this moment. Right. And just like you say in your tagline, if you, your girls give you a chance to hone your craft every day. It's so true. <laughs> like I feel like I, I did it really horrible today and tomorrow I might just ace it. So yeah. And again, every single day. Yes, you have lots of opportunities to learn, which is a great way of looking at it. And that's exactly how we should, we want to look at it. Okay, so we're setting up Christine in the very best way possible to kind of, to help solve this problem. I would also encourage you to wake him up 10 minutes earlier, give yourself another 10 minutes of buffer time, because obviously it's not quite enough time at this point. Mm-hmm. And um, and then the other thing I would, that you're going to go back to, um, which we don't have time to dive into right now here, is if 
everything fails, you're going to go back to on the weekend, have a win-win problem solving conversation with him about this. And you're going to, you're going to sit him down and talk to him about it. Talk to him about what your needs are, ask him what his needs are and have him be involved in the process of solving the problem of the morning and getting out the door. Okay. You can do that. Okay, and you'll return to you'll return to the module for that, which I can we can always uh, send you the links for. Obviously, if you're if you if you've lost them, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're gold to me. They're gold to me. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, uh, Christine, how is this feeling? This sort of this plan of attack for getting getting to school on time in the morning. This feels really great, but what, what I'm taking away from it is when you find these challenges, you just have to like pull it out, just pull it right out of the day, out of the situation and kind of just sit down and look at it and examine it and just figure out a way to make it better. Yeah. Like not only am I finding a different way to handle the mornings, I'm just kind of finding a new problem solving skill to, to kind of handle these, these stressful times that, that we're always going to encounter just to make them a little bit easier for us every day. Awesome. Yes, exactly. Like we're going to look at this one thing getting out of the school in time, but you're going to extrapolate it to a bunch of different things. So that's great. Awesome. So this is so cool, Christine. I really love this. So today we, we talked about, you know, your story, all the anxiety you dealt with when your son was young and your, you know, your journeys into mindfulness. We talked about, um, your, you know, your journeys of, um, your wins. And, and we talked about this intense challenge, which is great because it's such a super common intense challenge of getting to the, getting to school on time. So what is your biggest, uh, takeaway from talking today? Well, my biggest takeaway is you've just been such a great mentor to me in so many different ways. And, um, my biggest takeaway is just the opportunity to say thank you and just spend this time together, kind of working through all these things that I think about. And, uh, I feel like my, my favorite thing that you said today was if I explore my interest, clarity will come. Mm. So I, I think that that was um, my golden nugget that I got from today. Yay. So that, that was a favorite. <laughs> Yay. That's so cool. I want to thank you so much for being so open and vulnerable and being on the Mindful Mama podcast. It's really so cool. And I know that people are going to get so much out of this. It's, I'm sure I know it's going to be really valuable for people. So thank you so much, Christine. It really makes a big difference. Well, thank you. And thank you for the, the honor of being on. Thank you so much for listening to the Mindful Mama podcast. I really appreciate your presence. Isn't it amazing how we can problem solve these issues and and do it in such a way that we can look and see that it's conflicts of needs, right? Her son has needs, she has needs, and we just have to resolve these conflicts of needs. And I love hearing about how meditation made such a huge impact on Christine's life and makes it really makes me feel amazing to hear that, of course. So I hope that you found a lot of interesting stuff in this episode. Please share it with your friends. If you thought it was helpful, please let me know. Go ahead and tag me on Facebook, email me at hunter at mindfulmamamentor.com. And I would love for you to join this Mindful Mama tribe, join the Mindful Parenting tribe and really turn things around. It's funny. I have a friend who ha- talks about how she has older kids. Her her sons are in their 20s and she's like, she says, oh my gosh, that mindful parenting course. She's like, it's so much th- cheaper than the therapy they need later, <laughs> which is so true. We really do need to invest our time and energy into what is important to us, right? We need to put our money where our mouth is and really invest in are these relationships that are going to last a lifetime and turn them around if we are struggling. So go to mindfulparentingcourse.com and connect with the Mindful Parenting Course and maybe you'll connect with us in the Mindful Parenting free training. And I can't wait to see you there. It's going to be amazing. So thank you again so much for listening. I'm wishing you a beautiful week, my friend. Namaste. 
Are you frustrated with parenting? Do you want to practice conscious, compassionate parenting, but you don't know how? It's not easy, and there's no roadmap for this. Until now. I'm Hunter Clark Fields, creator of the Mindful Parenting Course, and I know how frustrating it is because I've been there. I struggled as a young mom, and when I found myself yelling and triggered by my child, I knew there had to be a better way, and there is. Mindful parenting is different from other parenting trainings. They don't tell you that all of that good advice is as good as useless when our internal stress response is triggered. Mindful parenting teaches you research-based tools and practices to reduce your stress response so that you can respond rather than react. And it teaches you exactly what to say so that you can create willing cooperation from your child. You can learn more and enroll at mindfulparentingcourse.com and you can join us for a free live training coming up soon where you'll learn why your kids don't listen to you, how your brain undermines your parenting, and how to create cooperative kids without losing your temper. Sign up now at mindfulparentingcourse.com slash free training. That's mindfulparentingcourse.com slash free training. I'll see you there.